Today, I'll be surviving 200 days in a cave-only world. In the first 100 days, I defeated every boss twice, got tons of useful villagers, and got fully enchanted netherite armor and tools. But this challenge is still far from over. There's still so much more we can do in this world. So today, I'll be surviving another 100 days. By the end of this challenge, I have three main goals. Construct more automatic farms, build up and expand my main base area, and complete as many advancements as possible while down here in the caves. This is 200 days in a cave-only world, and the story begins on day 100. Now, the first thing that I want to do is build some farms, since it's been a constant struggle to get food in this world. I mean, look at my food chest, it's practically empty. So to fix that, I'm going to be building a hogland food farm. This should be pretty easy, and I'm just going to need three stacks of blocks, some torches, some trapdoors, fences, and everything else. Now, we're also going to need some warped fungi, but we'll grab those on our way to build the farm. And now I'm just going to need some stuff to build a portal, like obsidian, and a flint and steel. And now I just need a few more things, some scaffolding blocks, a whole bunch of ladders. Oh, I am not going to have enough wood for this. So I'm going to have to get my flowering azaleas and my bone meal and gather up some more wood. Okay, this should be enough ladders. Now I'm just gonna need some ender pearls to get onto the nether roof and we should be good to go. Oh wait, there's actually one more thing that I need and that's the subscribe button. We're getting super close to 500,000 subscribers. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Okay, there we go. That's everything that we need. So let's head to the nether. And now we need to find a crimson forest to build this farm in. And I think there's one right over here by my stronghold portal. Oh wait, actually we do need one more thing and that's these warped fungi. And I'm just gonna need five of these. There we go, perfect. All right, and just over here, I think there should be a crimson forest. Let's see, yep, there. There it is. Okay, nice. Now, since I don't have TNT to break the bedrock up here, I'm going to have to do this a little different. And the first step is going to be to build a portal right here. And let's see where this takes me. I really hope it's not the surface. Okay, we're inside a cave. Nice. So now that I have this portal linked, let's head back through. Go away. And now I'm going to make my way up onto the roof. Let's grab all my scaffolding blocks. And I'm just going to pillar up right next to the portal. Okay, and here's the bedrock. Let's see. Is this Y126? It isn't. Okay, so we're going to have to find a different spot. Oh, I think right here should be perfect. So I'm just going to have to grab some ender pearls and some ladders. And then we can get up here like this. Okay, and now that I'm on top of the roof, I'm going to have to build another portal up here. And I'm going to line it up exactly with the portal that I built down below. Okay, let's light this one now. And it should put me back in that same cave. Okay, it does. Oh, and here's our zombie friend. <laughs> and now if I go back through here, it should put me below the roof. Okay, it does. Nice. So this is my way to get down from the roof. But now that I have these portals all linked up, let's head back up to the roof again. Okay, here we are. We're back on the roof. Nice. All right, now I think over in this direction is still the Crimson Forest. So this is where I'm going to build the farm. First, I'm going to have to build the spawning platform. It's going to be all these deep slate bricks with dirt in the corners. And then on top of all this dirt is going to go the warped fungi. And then on top of the warped fungi is going to go a bunch of fences. All right. And now we just have to grab my torches and place them all down like this. Okay. And that's the spawning platform complete. Now over here is where the collection system is going to go. So that's what I'm building next. It's going to be a box like this with a bunch of trap doors on top right here. And then my hoppers pointing this way and then into some chests down here. Okay. And after a bit more work, the farm is basically done. I just have to add some lava right here. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of my scaffolding blocks. And now we have to pillar up to the AFK spot, which is about a hundred blocks above the farm. Oh, and look at that. It's already working. You can see hoglins going in. Amazing. Oh no, some hoglins have escaped. Uh, let's see how much the farmers produced so far. Oh wow, look at that. That's actually pretty good. But I came down here to grab some ladders and also some building blocks. All right, here are all of my ladders. Okay, let's start building up now. Okay, and here we are. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's definitely working. Nice. Oh, there's so many. Look at that. This is crazy. This farm works really good. Let's stay up here for just a little bit and see how much this farm can produce. Hopefully it's lots of food because I'm down to my last 19 golden carrots. Okay, it's been a day. Let's see how this farm did. And look at that. We got eight stacks of cooked pork chops. That's honestly really good. That'll probably last me the rest of the 100 days. Oh, and we also got tons of leather. Nice. This stuff is actually pretty rare down here. Okay, nice. That farm was definitely a success. Okay, now that I'm back home, I want to build one more farm. And this one's going to be for my villagers. And it's going to be a carrot and potato farm. This farm should be pretty easy to build with the main ingredient being dirt. And I need three and a half stacks of it. So let's see. Where can I find some dirt down here? Oh, wait. I think I have an idea. Let's grab all my extra dirt as well as some gravel. Turn it into coarse dirt. And then I think if you use a hoe on it, it goes to normal dirt, right? Okay, it does. Nice. And then I can use this to basically duplicate my dirt, but this might take a while. Okay, here's all my dirt, and now I just have to go get the rest of the items. And these should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna need some trapdoors, some chests, some composters, some building blocks, some hoppers, and some water. And now the last thing that I need is some glowstone. And I actually don't have any. Let's see, is this guy selling some? Okay, he's not. So I'm back in the nether. Let's see if I can find some glowstone. Okay, there's some right here. Nice. Okay, and that was the last ingredient. Now we're also gonna need three villagers. So let's see, do I have any beds in here? I don't think I do. So let's buy some from this guy, place them all down, and give these guys some food to breed. I'm probably gonna need some more. So Let's go gather up all my potatoes. Okay, here you guys go. Okay, and they're already breeding. Nice. Okay, let's go build this thing. I'm going to build it right down here. 
Okay, there we go. Both farms are complete now. Let's place some water on the inside like this. Now I just have to build up the walls around them. And that's now done. So now it's time to start working on the collection system in the center right here. It's going to be some hoppers going in like this, some chests over here, and then a hopper going into the chest. Oh, and you know what? I actually did forget something. And that's two hopper minecarts and also some rails. And I don't have enough wood to craft the chest, so I'm going to have to grow some more trees. I really wish I could make a tree farm with these azalea trees, but I don't think it's possible. So I'm just going to have to deal with always never having enough wood. All right, let's craft up these hoppers, turn them into hopper minecarts, and we're good to go. Oh, and also since I'm here, I'm going to grab some potatoes and some carrots, and I'm going to use this to kickstart the farm. Okay, we should be good to go now. Let's turn all this into farmland, place down my composter and my glowstone, plant up potatoes on one side, and carrots on the other side. Okay, everything is almost set up now. I just have to finish this center collection area. I need two trap doors on either side like this, and then two trap doors on top like this. Okay, and there we go. I think I'm ready for the villagers now. And let's see. Okay, we do have three new villagers, but they're still babies. So let's sleep real quick, and let's grab some boats to move these guys over. Oh, and look at that. We have one grown-up villager. Perfect. Let's go down here and grab a workstation. Let's use the stone cutter, and I'm gonna try to lure this guy outside. This might turn into a disaster. I really hope not. Okay, let's go like this. Wait, where's he going? No, come back. <laughs> there we go. We got him in the boat. Okay, nice. Now let's go all the way down here. Let's let this guy out of his boat, and I'm gonna lure him with a workstation up here like this. Come on, friend. Here we go. Let's go once more like this. Oh, this is so easy. It's amazing. Whoa. Oh my gosh. We have our villager friend safe over here. Let's see if he'll want to take this job. Okay, I think he does. Perfect. Look at that. Now he can get to work planting up all my crops. And now let's see if those other two villagers are grown up now. Okay, one is, and so is the other one. Nice. Okay, this is perfect. Let's do the same thing as before. Place a boat right here. Use a workstation to lure him. What are you doing? <laughs> he keeps closing the door behind him. Okay, there he goes. No, wait. No, I only want one villager. Oh, this guy is just a novice shepherd, so I think it's fine. Let's just bring both of these guys. I do have to break his workstation, though. Okay, and now he's good to go. Let's let these guys out of their boat now. All right, I got one in the boat and the other one. Nice. <laughs> That's so easy. Okay, let's get these guys moved in now. What just happened? What? We took fall damage from that? How? The villager died, too. Oh my gosh. I wasn't even recording either. That was so weird. How do you take fall damage in a boat? Okay, well, I don't know what I did wrong there, but I guess we're gonna have to get another villager now. Let's see. I really hope this guy doesn't die. Okay, here goes nothing. Please don't die. Okay, that worked. No, wait, don't kill the villager. Oh, it's so chaotic down here. Why? Okay, all the zombies are dead, and we should be able to get this guy to safety now. I'm gonna place a workstation up here, break his boat, and it's working. Nice. Amazing. Okay, and now we just have one villager to go. Let's do the same thing as before by placing a workstation, and then a boat, and let's see if he'll come over here. There we go. All right, now this one's gonna be a little bit different, since we're gonna have to get this guy moved into the center right here. Okay, let's put his workstation right here. Nice. He's in the center now, and I should be able to trap him like this, and then like this. Okay, he's all moved in now. Nice. That was so easy. Hold on, I forgot something. I need to go like this, and then like this, and place two hopper minecarts. One right here, and then one right here. Oh, and look at that. He's throwing food already. Nice. It's working. How amazing is that? Now, I'm just gonna have to break this right here, and then this right here, and the farm is all done now. And look at that. There's tons of potatoes coming in already. That is so amazing. Okay, now I'm just gonna wait around for a little bit and see if this farm is functioning correctly. Okay, it's been a little while, and the farm appears to be working pretty good. The carrot side of the farm is all filled in now, and it's producing me a decent amount of crops. It takes quite a while for the farm to get up to full speed though, so while I wait for that, let's go do something else. And I think I have just the idea. And it's gonna be to move all these villagers out of my house, since they're extremely annoying. And they're also taking up my entire first floor. But I think I know just the place to move them. And it's gonna be right over here across this gap. I feel like over here would be the perfect place to build a little village for them. But to get over there, we have to build a bridge first. So let's get to work. I'm gonna need tons of oak wood for this, so I need to plant up some more trees. Okay, I've gathered up a ton of wood, and I think this should be enough for the bridge. So let's turn it all into planks, and then into slabs. And this should be good right here. Let's go test it out. First, we have to get rid of the old bridge. And I think I want to build the new bridge starting from right here. So first, we have to get rid of all of this. And now that I have that done, I can start working on the bridge. It's going to go something like this. You know what? I think I need to grab some water. That might make it easier for me. Since I have to build downwards and I don't have any scaffolding. All right, let's grab some water. Place it down like right here. Nice. And then I think the bridge is going to go something like this. Okay, cool. Now, I just have to keep repeating this pattern until I make it to the other side. And this might take a little while. Okay, after a bit of work, here's the basic outline of the bridge. And I actually needed way less slabs than I thought. <laughs> I really don't know why I thought I needed this much wood, because this bridge is actually pretty tiny. But now that I have the base done, I'm going to start working on the railings on either side. And I'm going to make these out of some fences and some more slabs. All right, let's see here. Let's do something like this. And then once again, I'm going to have to put down some water so I can build down something like this. And then I'll continue this along both sides. Okay, here's all the fences. And now I'm just going to put some slabs on top like this. And I'm not putting them directly on top of the fences since I want them to fall 
all the same profile as the base. All right, and after a bit more work, here's how it's looking. It's honestly turning out pretty cool, but I think it's missing just one thing, and that's some lanterns to make it a little bit brighter. So let's grab some iron, turn it into nuggets, and then also grab some coal and turn these into some lanterns. I think I'm going to put two right here, two right here. And then I also want to put some down underneath too. Let's go something like this. Okay, this is turning out pretty good. We'll do one last one right here. Nice. All right, let's check it out from a distance. And yeah, cool. It definitely looks a lot better. And that's the bridge complete. So now I just have to start working on transforming this area into a village. And that's going to be quite the challenge. First, I'm going to get rid of all these big drip leaves and then patch up some of this water. Head over to my Enderman XP farm to heal up my tools. Check on the villager crop farm. Oh, it's actually doing pretty good. And get to work making outlines for the buildings in the village. And I'll be back once I have the layout figured out. All right, I've spent some more time planning out the village and this is what I've come up with. I can't wait to see how this turns out. It's gonna be so cool. But with that being said, let's get started on the first house. I'm gonna need lots of wood, lots of deep slate, a stone cutter. Oh, and I also need some copper. And I don't think I have any, right? Yeah, I just have this. Okay, well, I guess it's time to go mine for some copper. Luckily, we're down here in the caves and finding copper should be super easy. And look at that, there's already some right here. So I'm just gonna spend a little while gathering up some copper and then we can get started on the village. Wait a second, I just saw something. It's a chicken! Oh my gosh, wait. I can't get any animals down here, so seeing a chicken is actually super rare. Let's see if I can save this chicken. Let's kill all the other zombies around it. And look at that. We have a chicken in this world. I can't believe it. Um, let's make it a little enclosure real quick, because I don't want it to escape or get killed. And there we go. Oh my gosh. Um, how do I get this guy to not despawn now? I think I'm going to have to name tag it. Let's see. I really hope it doesn't despawn when I go grab my name tag. Please, chicken, just stay there. Okay, it looks like it's still there. That's a good sign. I need to go as fast as possible. All right, let's come in here and grab my emeralds. Go to my librarian villager and buy a name tag. Ooh, 15 emeralds. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think it's worth it to have a chicken though. And then I'm going to need some iron blocks and I'll use this to make an anvil. Okay. Let's name this chicken E. I name all of my chickens E. Okay. I really hope it's still there. All right. Moment of truth. No. Oh, it despawned. Oh my gosh. I'm so sad. Well, I guess I'll keep this name tag in my inventory in case I happen to find one more. They're extremely rare though. So I might not get a second chance. Okay. Well, I guess let's keep searching for some more copper. All right. I'm back from a pretty big mining expedition and I got just over three stacks of copper ore. So let's place it all down and it up with fortune three and see how much we get. It's probably going to fill up my entire inventory. Let's see here. Okay. A stack of ore gave me almost seven stacks of raw copper. So let's smell all this up. And you know what? I should probably make a blast furnace. Let's just swap this out real quick to make some smooth stone. And I also have tons of iron, so I'll be able to craft a bunch of them. Nice. So now we have one blast furnace. We can load it up and then I have some more smooth stone so I can craft a second one. And we should have all this smelted up in no time. Okay. After spending way too long smelting all that up, this is all the copper that I managed to get. Honestly, pretty good. So with that out of the way, it's time to start building. And I'm going to do this house first. Let's craft up some deep slate bricks. And I'm going to add a little bit of variation to this base. Okay, here's how it's looking so far. And now I'm going to start working on the walls. And I'm going to build those out of some regular oak logs and some stripped oak logs. All right, the walls are all done. So now it's time to start working on the roof. And for that, I'm going to use some deep slate brick stairs with cut copper in the center. And there it is. The first house is complete. And the only thing I'm missing is some windows. So let's craft up some glass panes. We're going to put some glass right here, here, and here, and also right here. Okay, nice. Oh, wait, I almost forgot one thing. And that's that's the door. Oh, and I guess also the floor in here too. <laughs> and there we go. Our first house is all done. Let's see how it looks from over here. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. This village is going to be so cool. All right. Now that I have this one done, let's move on to this one. And this is actually going to be a pretty tiny house. It's just going to have enough room for a bed and a workstation. All right. The walls of this tiny house are done. So now let's start on the roof. And for that, I think I'm going to use some mossy cobblestone. So let's head back to my storage real quick, grab some moss and some cobblestone and turn it into mossy cobblestone. Nice. All right. This tiny little house is done. And I think it actually turned out pretty cool, but it's so tiny in here. It's crazy. So now that I'm done with this house, let's move on to this one right here. I'm going to grab some more deep slate, some stone, and I should have everything that I need to start building this thing. And after some more building, here it is. I've never really built anything in this style before, but I think it turned out kind of cool. So now that I have this one done, let's start on this house over here. And this house is going to be pretty huge. So before we start on it, I have to get some more wood. Okay. After mining a bunch of trees, I got two stacks of logs and I think that should be enough to build this house. So let's also grab some copper and get to work building this thing. Okay, and here it is. And this one turned out really good. It's definitely my favorite one so far. But with this one done, we have every building complete except for this one. So let's get to work. I'm gonna need tons of deep slates, lots of wood, and also some stone. Okay, so I've made some pretty good progress on the house, but once again, oh my gosh, okay. Well, how did I not see that? Okay, well, I don't think it actually blew up anything important, so I'll just deal with that later. But as I was saying, I'm all out of wood, so I'm gonna have to go get some more. 
And here's the completed build. And that officially marks all the houses in the village complete. So now it's on to the next step. And that's going to be grabbing all my lanterns, crafting up even more of them, and then adding them to all the houses for some extra light. Okay, and there we go. There's lanterns on all the houses now. So everything is super bright. But now it's on to step number three. And that's going to be to get a bunch of deep slate brick slabs and then add floors to all these houses. All right, with that done, it's on to step four. And that's going to be to build the center fountain right here. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but all I know is that it's going to be pretty small. So let's grab some deep slate brick stairs. And let's see what I can come up with. Okay, here's what I've come up with. It's very, very tiny, but I feel like if I make it any bigger, then it won't look good. So I think this will have to do for now. So now that I have the village basically complete, I just have to link up all the houses with some paths. And I think I'm going to need tons of items for that. Things like cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, oak slabs, clay, and moss. Okay, now that I have all those materials, let's start planning out where this path is going to go. Okay, after a bit of time, it doesn't really look like much, but I've mapped out all the areas where the paths are going to go. So now we just have to build them. And just like that, all the paths are done, and this really transformed the village. It looks really good now. But there is one more thing that I have to do to call this path complete. And it's gonna be a system to prevent the villagers from escaping. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's a little cat. Let's see, do I have some fish? Can you use tropical fish? I don't know, let's see. Okay, you can't use tropical fish. So I'm gonna have to go get some raw fish. And this cat is gonna be super useful later on, because there is one item that I need that I can only get from cats. And you'll see why towards the end of the video. Okay, eight raw cod, that should be enough. Let's see if this works. Wait, the cat's gone. Wait, what? Oh, Oh my gosh, why does this always happen to me? First it was the chicken and now it's the cat. Let's see, there might be another cat around here somewhere. Oh, here's one. Okay, it's not the same cat, but it's a different cat. Let's see if I can become friends with it. Give me your cat. Let's see. Oh my God, first try. Look at that, that's amazing. Okay, we finally have a cat and I really hope it can bring me some useful items when I sleep. Also leave a name for the cat in the comments because I don't know what to name it. Okay, well it is nighttime, so let's try to sleep. Okay, let's see what it brings me. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> okay, it brought me rotten flesh. How useful. But now that I finally have a cat, it's time to start working on that villager control system. And for that, I'm going to need some magma and some moss carpets. Now, here's what I had in mind. I'm going to place some magma down right here and then some moss carpet on top. And you can't even tell it's there. But when you walk over it, it gives you damage. So this will prevent the villagers from going down the bridge once they're in here. And that way, I don't have to use any ugly fence gates. But I haven't actually tested it. So let's see if it works. Let's grab a workstation and lure a villager to come out here. There he goes. Nice. And let's see if I can lure him towards the bridge. Okay, so far it's working. And now to see if it actually works. If I place it right here, then he doesn't come. Okay, nice. Look at that. So this actually works to keep the villagers inside. Let's break this real quick so he can come over. Come on, friend. There we go. Let's see if it works in the other direction now. Let's break his workstation and place it over here. And look at that. We finally have our little villager control system. Let's go get the rest of the villagers moved in now. Let's see if I can just do it all at once, actually. That might be kind of chaotic, but let's just do it for fun. Let's grab all their workstations. And here they all come. Look at that. But we still have some villagers that don't have jobs. So let's grab some blast furnaces to use as workstations and lure the rest of these villagers. Okay, something's happening. They're all trying to go to sleep, I think. Oh, this is scary. Let's try to all lure them into here. Let's put down a bunch of beds. I should be able to lure these guys over here. This has not been going to plan so far. Look at this. What are these guys doing? Oh, this is cursed. They're all going to their beds. Okay, amazing. Let's see if I can get the rest of them now. Okay, everyone is all moved in and they all have beds too, which is great. They're not exactly sleeping in the right beds, but I guess that's fine. But it's time to sleep myself. And now I want to work on getting some more useful villagers. More librarians for enchanted books, some armorers for some enchanted armor, toolsmiths for enchanted tools, and other villagers that can give me items that I can't get down here. So let's get to work. Okay, so I just left and look what my cat brought me. This is exactly what I wanted, a phantom membrane. I can't believe it. Let's store this away somewhere safe and we'll save it for later. But the progress on these villagers is not going very well. I seem to have lost a few. I'm not sure if they fell off and died or something or maybe they're lost, but I can't find any of my farmer villagers. And those are kind of my most important villagers. So I really hope I eventually find them. But until then, I'm gonna keep doing some more work and getting more villagers. Okay, that ended up being a ton of work, but I have so many villagers now. There's tons of them in this house, even more in this house and some more over here. I think I went a little overboard on all these villagers, but most of them are fully leveled up. But check out all the emeralds I was able to get. This will definitely come in handy later on for things like glass and golden carrots. But as I was working on all of this, I realized I was missing something. And that's a path from my village to my base. Every time I had to go home, I kept getting stuck in all this water right here. And it was getting pretty frustrating. So let's get to work building another path. It's going to be the same design as the village path, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, and also check this out. These are all the items that my cat has brought me when I've been sleeping. And these are going to be super useful for later on. But let's grab some moss, some mossy cobblestone and cobblestone and some oak slabs. And then I'll use this to start building the path. 
Okay, and after just a little bit of work, here is the completed path. And I think it actually turned out pretty good. But you know what? I think I should continue it over to my enchanting area. And then after that, we can also transform this area too. And I think that's going to be pretty cool too, since so far this enchanting area has just been tucked away in a corner and forgotten about. So let's do the same thing as before and start working on this path. Okay, I've run into a little bit of an issue. To get over here, I'm going to have to cross all this farmland. But I really want to keep this farm since it's making me tons of emeralds for my villagers. So instead, I think I'm going to build a bridge going over it. And I'm going to try to do it in a similar design to this one. And I wonder how this will turn out. Okay, and here's the completed bridge. I'm not sure if it's too steep of an arch, but I think it looks fine. So now that I have this done, it's time to start working on the path that goes up to the enchanting area. And this should be pretty easy. Okay, here's the path. And now I'm just gonna work on fixing up the outside of the enchanting area. Okay, and here's the completed outside of the enchanting area. And I think it's actually turning out really good, but I think I wanna do something to make it look even cooler. And that's gonna be to move my portal from here to in here. I already carved out a little area for it, but I just have to get some more obsidian. I'm really curious to how this will turn out. Luckily, I have tons of obsidian down here, and there's also tons of zombies. Okay, 27 obsidian should be good. Let's go see how this looks. All right, the obsidian's gonna go right here, and now I just need a flint and steel to light it, or maybe even a fire charge. Okay, let's see. Whoa, look at that. That looks really cool, actually. Let's see, how does it look from inside? Okay, also pretty cool. Now let's tear down this old portal. And now let's see if this one even works. Hopefully it puts me in the same area. Let's see. Okay, it does. Nice. Okay, now that I have the path and the exterior done, it's time to start working on the interior. And the first thing that I'm going to do is move this all over one block because it's not centered. And it's a good thing I have a silk touch axe because that's going to make this way easier. All right, the enchanting table will go right here. And then all the bookshelves around it like this. Both of my barrels like this with all the items inside. And then I'm just going to fix up this corner right here. Something like this. There we go. And now for the inside, I'm going to add a bunch of hanging lanterns. But I think I want these to be soul lanterns. So let's see, do I have any soul sand in here? Oh, I only have one. Let's see, how many torches can I craft with just one? I think you go like this, right? Okay, I can only craft four, so I'm gonna have to go get some more. Here we go. Nice. I'm probably not even gonna need that much, so let's just grab up maybe a stack, and there we go. Wait, I'm like completely lost. Oh, it's up here. Okay, I think it's time to use a firework rocket. I haven't used one this whole time, and I still have 58 of them, but these are extremely hard to get, so I'm trying to use them very sparingly. All right, let's head back home, craft up some soul torches, and then turn them into soul lanterns. Okay, 28 should be more than enough. So now I'm going to head into the enchanting area and start adding some hanging lanterns. I really hope this turns out good. And there we have it. The enchanting area is done. This turned out really cool. And also we've made so much progress on this area in a pretty short amount of time. I built two bridges, this village, all these paths, and we're only about halfway done with the 100 days. But now it's time for some adventure. If you remember from the intro, one of my other goals in these 100 days was to complete as many advancements as possible while down here in the caves. Some of them are going to be super easy, but others are going to be a huge challenge. I just have a few advancements left to do in the end, so let's do these first. First, I'm gonna need a glass bottle, some gas tears. Wait a minute, I only have two gas tears and I need four. So let's head to the nether and see if I can find some ghasts. I had a really hard time finding some last time. Oh my gosh, wait, there's one right here. <laughs> oh, there we go. And look at that, I have three now. But as I was saying, I had a really hard time finding some last time, so I hope it's not as bad this time. I am gonna use some firework rockets though, and let's see if I can find any more. Hello, there we go. Oh no, I didn't grab it. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, it just went into the lava. Oh my gosh. Now I'm turning on my shader so I can see a bit farther. And look at that. There's one right here. This is so easy. And there we go. I now have four gas tears. Wait a minute, but there's a chicken. Okay, I think I have an idea. I still have this name tag with me. So let's kill this guy. Okay, the chicken is safe. And now we're gonna name tag my chicken so it'll never despawn. And let's fly back up here real quick. And then we'll head back to my portal. Wait a second. I just heard a villager. Wait, what? Did a villager somehow come through here? Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> there's a villager. Okay, well, I guess I'll just leave him there. I already have plenty of villagers. But let's head back home now. And to bring back this chicken, I'm gonna need one specific thing. With the first ingredient being slime balls, and the next ingredient being string. And I think you craft it like this, right? There it is, a lead. I really hope this works. All right, we're back in the nether, and since I name tag this chicken, it should still be there. Okay, here it is. Now, if I put it on a lead, and then if I fly up, will it stay on the lead? Okay, that didn't work. How am I gonna do this? Let's make sure to put out all this fire, though, because I don't want my chicken to burn to death. And I guess I'll pillar up like this. Okay, this seems to be working. Come on, chicken. Okay. Okay, here we are. Nice. I can't believe I have a chicken. All right, we're almost to my tunnel. And here we are. Let's see. Is he gonna go in? There we go. <laughs> okay, I really hope he made it. Look at that. There he is. I can't believe it. I actually have a chicken in this world. I never thought this day would come, to be honest. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with him just yet, but I'm gonna tie him off right here. All right, it's back to the task at hand, and that's getting some advancements. Now, we just have two advancements left in the end, and one of them is you need a mint. And to get this, I'm gonna have to respawn the dragon. So that's why I had to get four gas tiers. I'm also gonna need some glass, though, so let's grab some emeralds, find a 
librarian villager and buy some glass. All right, now that I have this glass, let's make some end crystals. Oh, wait, I also need eyes of ender and I have some extra blaze rods. Okay, nice. Let's turn these into blaze powder, grab some ender pearls and turn them into eyes of ender. Okay, now we're good to go. Four end crystals. Nice. Now, first I'm going to have to empty out my inventory because it's overflowing with a bunch of random stuff. And then we can head over to the end and respawn the dragon. Oh no, I made an enderman mad. But look at that. We already have some dragon's breath and we'll use it to get the advancements. There we go. Nice. Okay, and now I just have to kill the dragon. I do have tons of firework rockets still. So let's get rid of all these towers. And now we just have the ones in the cages left. Nice. First try. Let's see if I can do it on this one. There we go. Okay, all the towers are destroyed. So now we just have to kill the dragon. It's a good thing I have a pretty OP bow and also maxed out armor. So this should be pretty easy. Okay, here comes the perch. Let's do some damage and then also some damage with my bow. Okay, this might be it. And there we go. The third dragon that we've killed in this world. Let's grab all this XP. And now we just have one more advancement to do in the end. And that's gonna involve gathering up some blocks, gathering up some ender pearls and going through an end gateway. Okay, are there any cities around here? It doesn't look like it. So I guess I'll use some firework rockets to try to find one. I really don't want to waste that many though because these are super hard to get oh there we go wait looks like i've already been to this one though but that's fine because i only need shulkers for this advancement and there's one right here nice hello friend okay give me levitation wait it just passed right through me what <laughs> okay there we go and then i think if i ender pearl up here it should give me the advancement wait what let's try again there we go okay we got the advancement great view from up here levitate up 50 blocks from the attacks of a shulker and there we go i have all the end advancements complete so next up i'm gonna work on some of the nether advancements oh no i got an enderman mad at me i need to run home no. Ah. There we go. Now for the nether advancements, I want to start with the easiest ones first. And those are going to be the beacon advancements. Let's come down here and grab all my extra iron, craft them into iron blocks. I hope this will be enough. Let's see. I might have some extra iron with my villagers though. There we go. I have tons of it. Okay, nice. Now to craft the extras into iron blocks. And I think we should be good now. Now you might be wondering why I need to do the beacon advancements because I already have a full powered beacon right here. Well, it turns out there's actually a bug that prevents you from getting the beacon advancements when you use different resource blocks. And since last time I used a bunch of diamonds, gold, iron, and emeralds. It didn't give me any of the advancements. So I'm just going to get rid of all these extra blocks right here. I still can't believe how many diamonds I have. Oh my gosh. And then I'm going to replace them with some iron blocks. And hopefully this should give me the advancement. Let's see. Wait, what? It's not working. Look at this. Why? Maybe it's because I'm in the nether. I don't know. Let me try to break this and then replace it. Let's try again. Oh my gosh. It's not working. Why? Let's just try to tear down this whole beacon and then try it somewhere else. Hopefully that will work. Okay. It's all torn down now and I'm just going to clear out a little area up here. And I think right here is perfect. So let's dig all the way back down now and then we can try rebuilding it down here i really hope this works all right here's the last layer and moment of truth please okay we did it <laughs> i have no idea why it didn't work over there but we got the advancements so that's all that matters so now that i have those two advancements done it's time to do one more for some reason i still haven't done the oh shiny advancement and there we go <laughs> that was super easy okay thank you very much and now it's time to die all right what's next country load take me home you know what this is a bridge bastion so i should have gotten a lodestone from here let's go back home real quick have a quick nap with my cat. Did he bring me anything? A feather. How nice. <laughs> and let's check my valuables chest. Okay, there's no lodestone in here. What about in here? Okay, here's the lodestone. And now to head over to my villagers, grab some emeralds, and see if I can buy a compass from one of these guys. Let's see. Is anyone selling a compass? Maybe it's the librarians? I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, no compasses. It's probably the cartographer, but I don't have any cartographer villagers. Okay, that's fine. I think I can just craft one myself. Now, I think to craft one, all I need is one redstone dust and eight iron ingots like this. Wait, how do you do it? Oh, it's just four. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, where should I put this lodestone? I think right here with my shrine will be pretty cool. Let's move this deep slate coal, place my lodestone like this, and then we can get the advancements. Nice. Okay. That was pretty easy. Now, what's next? Not quite nine lives. That should be pretty easy to get. All I need is six crying obsidian and four glowstone. All right. Let's craft up a respawn anchor. Okay. Now, to do this, I need to go to the nether since if I don't, it'll blow me up and kill me. Let's place it down right here. And just to be safe, I'm going to put on my chest plate and heal myself up. I don't think I've ever used these before. Kind of scared. Oh, wait. You need four glowstone. Stone. Hold on. Let's grab one more and we should be good to go. I'm kind of terrified. I hope this thing doesn't kill me. Let's go underneath it, actually. Let's go one, two, three, and then moment of truth, four. Okay, we got it. Nice. We got not quite nine lives. And I think I can also set my respawn point here, right? Yeah, check it out. Now, what do we have next? Subspace bubble. And then we also have the two strider advancements. Um, Let's do the strider advancements first. I think that should be kind of fun. Now, first up, I'm going to need a warped fungus. There we go. And then I have to grab a fishing rod. And I think you just go like this, right? There we go. Warped fungus on a stick. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, let's head back to the nether. Actually, wait, do I need a saddle for a strider? I can't remember. Um, I don't think I can even get saddles down here though, right? Let's just try it out and see what happens. I really hope you don't need a saddle because that's going to be extremely hard to get. But let's head over to this giant lava lake and try to find a strider that's pretty easy to access. This one looks good right here. Hello, friend. Can I ride him? Oh no, <laughs> you need a saddle. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, that's going to make things way more difficult. I'm going to go home and check my chest one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything because if not, I'm going to have to go on quite the adventure to find a saddle. Oh my gosh, wait, I have one. How did I miss that? Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I cannot believe that. I honestly did not think I had one, but I guess I must have found one in a dungeon or something. That's extremely useful. All right, let's head back to that lava lake, locate a strider. Here's one. Hello, friend. We're going to put a saddle on you, and then I should be able to ride him. There we go. Look at that. And I think I have to right click to get the advancement, right? There we go. This boat has legs. Awesome. That was actually pretty easy. But now comes the hard part, and that's the advancement feels like home. I have to find a way to bring a strider back to the overworld and then ride it on a lava lake. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but I guess I'll figure it out. Let's bring this guy up here first. And you know what? I might be able to use a lead on him. Let's fly back home real quick. Grab myself a lead. Let's see if I can use a lead on it. Okay, I can. I really hope I can use this to bring this guy back. Okay, we're going to go up like this. There we go. And I wonder if I can do the same thing that I did with the chicken. That would be super useful. Let's gather up a ton of building blocks and see if I can bring this guy home like this. I just really hope I don't kill him from fall damage. That would definitely be an issue. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wait, I think I did it. I did. Look at that. <laughs> okay, let's bring this guy back to my portal now. And here we are. I'm at the portal and he's in the overworld. How amazing. Okay, now I'm just going to have to find a big lava lake. And since I'm down here in the caves, that should be pretty easy. Let's tie this guy up at home first. And then I'm going to go on a little expedition to find some lava. I really don't know where to find some. All right, so I found a lava lake, but I'm not sure this one is big enough. But over here, there's an even bigger one. And look at this. I'm not sure if this is going to be big enough still, but I guess we can try. It's going to be quite the challenge to bring the strider over here. So I really hope this works. All right, hello, strider friend. Oh, he looks so cold. We need to get him to some lava as soon as possible. All right, follow me, friend. Guys, I just messed up really bad. The strider is in water and I think it's going to die. Okay, well, it just died and I wasn't even recording. Oh, okay. Well, looks like we're going to have to go get another strider now. I'm just glad that it dropped me the saddle because that would be even harder to get. So let's head back to my portal, find myself another strider, put a saddle on it and make the long journey back home. Okay, I'm back to where I was before. So let's try to get this strider over to that lava. And this time I need to make sure it doesn't touch any water. Okay, we're almost there. Here's the giant lava lake. I really hope this works. All right. Hello, friend. Let's go ride in some lava. Okay. So far, haven't gotten the advancement. Um, oh no, is this lava lake not big enough? It's not working. Oh my gosh, guys. I can't believe it. Okay, I think I need to try something. I'm going to leave this strider over here for now, and I'm going to make this lava lake a little bit bigger. First, I'm going to dig a tunnel off in this direction, and now I just have to fill it up with lava. Let's open it up like this, and then I guess I'll use my bucket to place a bunch of lava down in here. I wonder if this will even work, but I guess we're about to find out. Okay, the lava is looking quite lumpy, but I hope this will be enough. Let's grab my warp fungus on a stick, get on my strider friend, and I guess we'll see if this works. I'm going to try to dig out a little area right here first, and then we'll go like this, and then like this. Please work. Oh no. Hold on. The tunnel's not tall enough. Okay, this looks quite a bit better, so let's see if this works. Let's get on my strider once again, and we'll try this out and see if it works. Okay, please. There we go. We did it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I guess the lava lake just wasn't big enough to begin with, but there we go. We got the advancement. Feels like home. Take a strider for a long ride on a lava lake in the overworld. This one was pretty difficult, but I'm glad we got it done. I'm gonna leave my strider here, though, since he's more at home in all this lava, and it would also be too hard to bring him back. But now that I have this one done, it's time for another advancement, and I think I want to do subspace bubble. Use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. I think this should be pretty easy, but I just need to make sure that my portal generates underground since if it doesn't, then I'll get killed. In this world, I have a mod installed that instantly kills me if I see the sky. So I need to be super careful with that. But let's fly down here real quick, gather up some obsidian for a portal and then a flint and steel. And let's do this. I'm so scared. So 7,000 divided by eight is 875. So I need to travel at least 875 blocks to get the advancement. Okay. So I've made it 900 blocks away and that should be enough to get the advancement. So let's build a portal and now we just have to hope that it doesn't kill me oh whoa okay that scared me for a second because the chunk didn't load but there we go we got subspace bubble now up next are two pretty hard advancements in the nether so i think i'm gonna skip these for now since over in the husbandry tab there's tons of easy advancements that i can get but first we have to fly all the way back home and you know what i might be able to take a shortcut let's gather up some wood first turn it into planks a crafting table some sticks and then some ladders and then i already have some ender pearls that we can use to get onto the roof so let's fly all the way up here mine my way up to the roof and go on top oh gosh okay all right we have to go in 
this direction. This is so easy. Okay, and here's my Hogland food farm, and there's my portal. Let's hop back through, and then back through again, and now we're below the roof. That was so easy. Okay, so now that I'm back home, the next advancement that I'm gonna do is the cutest predator. And this one should be extremely easy since I'm in a lush cave. Let's grab my bucket, and I think there's tons of axolotls over here, right? Let's see. Okay, maybe not. I've been seeing so many axolotls. Where do they all go? It's funny, as soon as I need axolotls, they all just disappear. So I guess we'll have to do a little adventure to find one. Okay, I haven't found any axolotls, but I do see some fish. And I think this should give me an advancement, right? There we go. Tactical fishing. Nice. Let's place this guy back, though, since I don't want to be cruel. And let's try to find an axolotl now. Maybe there's some over here. I don't know. Oh, here we go. I found one. Hello, friend. Let's get rid of you first, though. And there we go. The cutest predator. Okay, nice. Two advancements in a pretty short amount of time. Now, let's see. What's next? Glow and behold. This one should be pretty easy. Let's place our axolotl friend right here. Grab myself a sign, a glow ink sack. And then I guess I'll do something like this. A very descriptive sign. House. Now, let's see. There we go. Glow and behold. Now, what else can we do? Um, can I do the pears and the bats? Oh, I think I can. We're just gonna have to wait for this guy to lay some eggs, and then I should be able to breed two chickens together. Now, I'm gonna set up a little bit of a contraption first, and it's gonna involve a hopper that I'll place right below E, and have it pointing into a chest. And now, whenever E lays some eggs, it'll go straight into this chest. Let's grab some glass, and I'm gonna make a little enclosure for E. It's not the prettiest enclosure, but I think it'll do for now. <laughs> but while I wait for E to lay some eggs, let's do another advancement. And let's see, what can I do? Serious dedication. I haven't done this one yet? Wow, that's honestly kind of surprising. I have two netherite scraps, so I only have to get two ancient debris. So let's head back to the nether and go mining for some ancient debris. And since I only need two pieces, I'm not gonna use any explosives. I just really hope this doesn't take too long. And look at that, I already found some. Please be two. Okay, it looks like it's just one for now, but we're off to a pretty good start. Let's see if I can find any more. And look at that, two more pieces. Nice. That was actually much easier than I expected. And my tactic of mining along a chunk border actually works pretty good. Okay, that took me quite a while to get back, but let's melt up this ancient debris. Let's grab one more piece from my chest, as well as four gold, and turn it into an ingot. And now let's add it to my super OP hoe. And as soon as I place this into my inventory, we'll get the advancement. There we go. Serious dedication. Use a netherite ingot to upgrade a hoe, and then reevaluate your life choices. I forgot it said that. And I think that's all the advancements that I can do in the husbandry tab. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get a second chicken, but we might be able to figure that out later. But let's see. All the advancements are complete in the Minecraft tab, all of them except for two in the nether tab, all of them in the end tab. Now what about the adventure tab? Okay, we can definitely do is it a balloon, since all we need is a gas and a spyglass. So let's grab some copper, one amethyst shard, and we should be able to make a spyglass. And now we just have to find a gas. Let's see, there's gotta be some around here, right? Oh, there's one. And there we go. Is it a balloon? Nice. All right, that was pretty easy. Let's see what I can do next. Oh, is it a plane? Oh, I totally forgot about that one earlier. I'm gonna save this one for later though. Let's see what else I can do. I can't get any totems down here, so I can't do post mortal, but I could probably do hired help. Oh wait, I don't have any pumpkins though. I can't do star trader since I can't go to the surface. I can't do sticky situation since I can't get honey, but I think I can do old Betsy. The only thing it requires me to do is shoot a crossbow. And I don't think I need any special things to craft a crossbow, so this should be pretty easy. Yeah, it's just two string, a tripwire hook, three sticks, and an iron ingot. Let's grab a plank, some sticks, some iron, and some string. And we should be good to go. Let's go like this to craft a tripwire hook, and then like this to craft a crossbow. Okay, let's get the advancement. You know what? Let's make this interesting. Let's shoot something with it. Maybe I could snipe a skeleton or a zombie down here. Let's shoot a skeleton. There we go. <laughs> and I got the advancement. Nice. There's so many skeletons. Oh my gosh. I always hate going down here. It's so chaotic. But now what else can I do? Wow, I can't do a lot of these. Oh, you know what? I might be able to do sniper duel. Let's try that one right now. Let's go all the way over here and let's try to shoot the skeleton down here. There we go, I did it. <laughs> Kill a skeleton from at least 50 meters away. All right, now what's next? Bullseye. I think I can also do this one too. I just have to craft a target block and then shoot it from super far away. All right, now to craft a target block, I need a hay bale. Oh, and I only have five wheat. That shouldn't be an issue though, because I have tons of seeds and also tons of bone meal. So let's plant some seeds, grow it into wheat, and then harvest it up. I just need three more pieces. All right, here's the last one. And there we go. And then we're also going to need four pieces of redstone dust. First, we'll make a hay bale and then a target block. Okay, let's try this out. I don't think my aim is that good. Good though, so this might be super hard. Let's fly down here, place down my target block, and then go at least 30 blocks away. Okay, this should be 30 right here. Let's kill this zombie first. Ooh, the fire is gonna make it really hard to see. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be almost impossible. I can't see anything. Okay, I think I need to try a different way. Let's break this target block, grab some redstone, make some redstone torches, craft up a repeater, as well as a lever, and then I'm also gonna need a trap door. There we go. Okay, let's try this now. I'm gonna do this in kind of a hacked way, but it's still gonna work. Let's place down my target block right here, a trap door on top like this. Let's just 
see. If I power this, will the trapdoor open? Okay, it does. Nice. So now I'm going to make a line of redstone 30 blocks long, place a lever over here, one repeater in the center. Let's see. If I flick this lever, look at that. The trapdoor opens. Nice. Okay, now I just have to come back over here and shoot a ton of arrows as close to the center as I can get. Can you stop? Oh my gosh. Whoa. Two and a half hearts. How? Do shovels really do that much damage? There's tons of zombies now. Oh my gosh. They're coming from everywhere. Okay, let's see. I hope this works. And there we go. <laughs> that was so easy. Hit the bullseye of a target from at least 30 meters away. All right, now what's next? I think the only two other ones that I can do in here are hired help if I find pumpkins somehow and the is it a plane advancement. I'm going to save this one for later. So let's try to find some pumpkins to do hired help. I really don't know where I'm going to find pumpkin seeds though. Can you find them inside of dungeon chests? Okay, so I just looked it up and apparently you can. Let's just make sure I don't already have some. Okay, I don't. <laughs> that would be really annoying if I had some and did all that for nothing. Okay, let's stock up on some food, empty out my inventory and try to find some dungeons. This might be kind of difficult to be honest. Oh, look at this. I think this is a dungeon. Let's see. Okay, it is. A skeleton spawner. Oh, wait. Whoa. My health. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Hold on. I'm only on two and a half hearts. Okay. Wow. <laughs> what is wrong with me? That was way too close. Well, we found a dungeon, but first I have to kill all these mobs. Let's get rid of these creepers and then these skeletons. We'll also break the spawner for safety. Let's see what's inside. Okay. No pumpkin seeds so far. Oh, sharpness five. Oh my gosh. And also a music disc. Very nice. Uh, but nothing else very useful. Let's see. What about this chest? Okay. A name tag, some gunpowder, but no pumpkin seeds. So I guess we're going to have to keep searching. Oh, look at this. Another dungeon. Let's break it real quick. And it only has one chest, Ah, but no pumpkin seeds. But I guess I will take this music disc and everything else. And I guess we have to keep searching. Oh, look at this. Another spawner. I really hope there's pumpkin seeds, please. Okay. Another name tag. What about this one? Oh, okay. A golden apple, but still no pumpkin seeds. What the heck? I didn't know pumpkin seeds were so rare. Well, I guess we'll have to keep searching. Oh my, wait, guys, there's another one right here. How? What the heck? Oh, and it has pumpkin seeds. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. I can't believe there were two of them so close to each other. And then also had two name tags too. Nice. But there we go. I finally got what I was searching for, some pumpkin seeds. So now I just have to find my way back home and I have no idea where I even am. Okay. I'm finally back home. Let's break some of these melons and then plant out my pumpkins. Now we can grab some bone meal. Okay. None of them instantly grew. So I guess I'll just have to wait a little bit. Oh, let's see if E has laid any eggs. Okay. Still no eggs. I don't think E is ever going to lay any eggs to be honest. And I think it's because this chicken spawned as a hostile mob. So it won't lay any eggs. So if I ever want to get more chickens, I'm going to have to find a second chicken and then breed them together. That might be pretty difficult, but we still have quite a bit of time left in this world, so I might be able to do it. I just have to keep my eyes peeled for any chickens. But while I wait for those pumpkins to grow, let's grab some iron blocks to summon the iron golem. I have tons of iron in here. Okay, nice. Now we can turn these into iron blocks, and I'm just gonna need four of them. And this is really weird. Still no pumpkins have grown. So I guess we'll just have to wait until one grows. Oh, there we go. Finally, we have a pumpkin. Okay, and now to summon an iron golem, I just have to turn it into a carved pumpkin. So let's grab some shears. And now it's time to do an advancement that should have been extremely easy, but was actually quite difficult. Here we go. Hired help. Summon an iron golem to help defend a village. I can't believe how long it took me just to get pumpkin seeds, but let's see what's next. I think all the advancements at the adventure tab are impossible except for this one. Is it a plane? So let's do that one next. Now to get this advancement, I'm going to need a spyglass and four more end crystals. Okay. I only have three gas here, so I'm going to have to get one more. And it was actually pretty easy last time. So this shouldn't take too long. Let's see. Where are the ghasts? I found two of them. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, come back. <laughs> there we go. And we might as well just kill two for fun. And there we go. Nice. I now have six gas tiers. So now I can head back home. Wait, where are my librarian villagers? I only have two, but they're novices. Wait, did they die? Oh no. I think they might've died. I need my librarians to buy some glass. Okay. Well, I guess I'll have to upgrade these novices and then hope that they eventually trade me glass. Okay. There we go. I finally got some glass. Maybe this village isn't as safe as I thought it was because I seem to be losing a lot of villagers, but that's fine. I have my glass and that's all I need to craft up end crystals. So let's craft up four of them, head to the end, kill an angry enderman for some reason. What? I didn't even look at you. Maybe he remembers me from last time and respawn the dragon. Okay. Here it is. Let's grab my spyglass and get the advancement. Is it a plane? Look at the ender dragon through a spyglass and now I just have to kill it. And once again, I forgot to bring some beds. So I'm going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Let's grab my elytra, destroy all the towers and start killing the dragon. And there we go. We kill the dragon for the fourth time in this world. Oh my gosh. All right. Now what's next for the advancements? I think the adventure tab is all done since all these other ones I can't do in the caves. The end tab is done. The Minecraft tab is done. And that leaves us with the nether tab and the husbandry tab. I think the only other one in the husbandry tab that I can do is the parrots and the bats. And then in the nether, there's only two left to do. Uneasy Alliance and a Furious Cocktail. Let's do Uneasy Alliance first. This one's going to be quite the challenge. Let's head back home. And now to do this advancement, I think I'm going to need a really large portal. And that means I have to gather up a ton of obsidian. So let's start mining all this up. 
Okay, there we go. Almost three stacks should be enough. But while I was mining all of that up, I came up with a pretty good plan for how to pull this off. I'm going to use all of my obsidian to make a pretty large portal, build it on top of the nether roof, and then use the same mechanics as a gas farm to get the gas to go through the portal easily. But to do that, I'm going to need a ton of jack-o'-lanterns. So I'm going to grab all my pumpkins, turn them all into carved pumpkins, replant all the seeds I got from them, use some bone meal to make them grow, and then wait for them to produce me some pumpkins. We're probably going to need about a stack of pumpkins for this to work, so it's time for some farming. Okay, it's been a few days, and I've gathered up a ton of carved pumpkins. So now I just have to grab some coal and turn these into jack-o'-lanterns. And now the last thing that I need is a flint and steel. And I think we're good to go. So let's head over to my portal, head to the nether, and make my way over to my hogland farm to get onto the nether roof. Oh wait, hold on, I forgot something. I forgot ender pearls. Okay, there we go. I've made it to my other portal. Let's break all this gravel real quick. This is so satisfying. And then we'll use it to get up onto the roof. Now to make this go as easily as possible, I need to build this in a soul sand valley. And there's one actually right over by spawn, so I just have to run until I see the fog turn blue. Okay, I found it. So now the first step is to place all these jack-o'-lanterns down like this. We're gonna leave a one block gap space in the center. Oh my gosh, and look at that. I had the perfect amount of jack-o'-lanterns. I just have two left to spare. All right, now in the center, I'm gonna place down my obsidian, and then we'll use it to build a pretty large portal. Okay, I think this should be good, but now that I have this done, I really don't wanna risk this portal putting me on the surface, so I'm gonna light it. Oops. So I'm gonna light it, write down the coordinates, make my way back home, head back down below the roof, and make my way to those same coordinates in the overworld. Now I'm doing this to be absolutely absolutely certain that the portals link correctly, since if I'm not careful, that portal could put me above the surface and kill me. So I'm just gonna have to dig in a straight line down here for about 1500 blocks. This might take a while. Okay, after a few days of mining, I found a cave where I'm gonna build the portal. I already calculated the coordinates, and right here would be the perfect place to build the portal. I just really hope it actually works. All right, let's light it, and let's see what happens. Oh gosh, I'm scared. Okay, look at that! It works! But now it's time for the real test. Let's see if this portal is correctly linked. Please. Okay, it is! Oh my gosh, okay, so everything is good to go. Let's hop back through one more time, and now we just have to build a little AFK platform up here, and then wait for some gas to spawn. I really hope this works, because this was a ton of work. Okay, we should be high enough, and I can barely see anything. Let's just sit up here for a little bit and see if I spot any ghasts. Okay, I've turned on my shaders so I can see a little better, but I still haven't seen any ghasts. I really hope I'm doing this correctly. Okay, this doesn't seem to be working, and I think I know why. First, let's go all the way back down. Oh, a skeleton spawned, so at least some things can spawn up here, but I don't know about any ghasts. Let's get rid of you. And before I do anything to fix this, let's just go through real quick and see if it worked. I'm curious. Oh, wait, look, there's some gunpowder. So that means a gas did spawn through here, but it just died. Okay, I think I know what to do. Let's just enlarge this area down here, since that way once the gas comes through here, it won't suffocate to death. Okay, it might have taken quite a while, but I cleared out an area five blocks in each direction around the portal. I really hope this works. So let's hop back through. I've turned on my shaders again so I can see properly. And now I just have to go all the way up to Y250. Oh my gosh, look, a gas spawn, but it didn't go through the portal. Oh my gosh, how do I deal with this? Let's see if I can lure it through. Hold on, let's turn off my shaders, fly back down here and see if I can get it to come through this portal. Come on, friend. No, don't fly up there. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is looking promising. Come on, come through the portal, please. This does not seem to be working. I don't think it wants to fly through. So I guess we're just gonna have to kill it. Sorry, friend. But let's see if any of them went through the portal. I really hope so. Hold on. Actually, before I go through, I'm going to put my chest plate on just in case. What if there's like 15 ghasts? <laughs> let's see. Okay, I don't see any of them. That's unfortunate. So it looks like we're going to have to keep trying. Maybe I have to build more portals since it spawned right here, but then just flew off in this direction. So I think if I build some more portals on either side, then it should work a little bit better. I really hope I have enough obsidian for this. Okay, I built the two portals. Let's light them. And I guess we'll go back up to my AFK spot and see if this works. And I don't really feel like building all the way up there. So let's use my firework rockets. Okay, here we are. Let's turn on my shaders, and I'll wait for a gas to spawn. Okay, I still haven't seen anything, and I think I'm gonna try one more thing to solve this. And it's gonna be to make the portals just a little bit taller, since I'm not sure if any gas can fit in here. Who knows, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But we did see a gas spawn on here, and that's a great sign. So at least I know that it has the potential of working. All right, I've made the first portal quite a bit bigger. Let's see if it lights. Okay, it does, nice. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two portals. Okay, all three portals are much bigger now, and let's see if this works. Let's fly all the way back up here, turn my shaders on so I can see, and then wait for some gas to spawn. Okay, so I just looked up a gas farm tutorial, and I think I've been doing this wrong, since in the center, it needs to be four blocks wide instead of three. So I think that's why no gas are spawning. So let's fly all the way back down here, and start tearing all this down to rebuild it. Okay, I finally rebuilt the farm. Let's light up the portals. Then let's go through one to make sure that they link correctly. Okay, they do. Nice. And I think we should be good to go. I really want this to work. I've put in so much effort. Let's fly all the way back up to my AFK spot, turn on my shaders, and wait for some gas to spawn.
Oh, I just saw one. Oh my gosh. Let's fly back down, put on my chest plate for safety. And let's see. Oh my gosh, please. Wait. Oh, it died. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, how can I make it not die? <laughs> Do I have to make this center portal even bigger? Let's just make it the length of the entire room and see if that works. Okay. Let's go back up to my AFK spot and try again. Okay. I just saw two of them. Chest plate time. And let's go through. They're here. They're here. There we go. I did it. I got uneasy alliance. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look at that. Rescue a gas from the nether, bring it safely to the overworld, and then kill it. <laughs> that was an extremely difficult advancement, but we did it. All right, and now that I have that advancement done, it just leaves me with two to go. One of them being a furious cocktail, and the other one being the parrots and the bats. And both of those are gonna be extremely difficult. Now, I wanna save a furious cocktail for last, so up next is the parrots and the bats. And I actually came up with a different way to do it. Since I have all these villagers in this village, that means we should have some cats spawning nearby. And since I already have a cat, I should be able to breed both of them together to get the advancement. Oh, wait a second. Can you breed axolotls? That might be an even easier way to do it. Let's see here. I'm going to grab some tropical fish and see if I can find any axolotls to breed. I have no idea if you can even do this, but that might be the easiest way. All right, we have one axolotl right here. Let's capture him and let's see if I can find a second one. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's see. Let's go like this. Oh no, you can't. Wait, how do you do it? Is it with tropical fish? Hold on. I need to do some research. Okay, so it is tropical fish, but I have to do it with buckets of tropical fish, not just the tropical fish item. Let's see if I can find some fish. There's usually tons of them over here. Okay, never mind. <laughs> and I'm also going to need two buckets too, so let's grab an extra one and try to find some tropical fish. Oh, here we go. There's tons of them. Okay, I have two tropical fish now. Let's see, where are those axolotls? There's one of them right here. Where'd the other one go? Oh no, I lost him. Okay, I might need one more bucket. Here we go. And then we'll use this to capture this axolotl. And now we just have to find one more. Oh, I see some. Let's go like this and then like this. Okay, please work. I did it. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I got this advancement and the skeleton is trying to ruin it for me. <laughs> Okay, now that I have that one done, it just leaves me with one advancement, a furious cocktail. And this one's gonna be the hardest advancement we've done yet, since I have to get every single potion effect. Let's start with the easy potions first, like fire resistance, regeneration, strength, and weakness. Now, next up, we have to craft a water breathing potion. And to do that, I need a puffer fish. Do I even have one? Oh, I do. Nice. I think I got these from fishing. And I'm also gonna need to craft up a brewing stand, which should be as easy as this. There we go. And then I'm also gonna need to buy some glass from my villagers to make some glass bottles. Let's see, here's my library. Thank you very much. And we can turn these into glass bottles. Now to just fill them up with water, put them in my brewing stand, grab some blaze powder for fuel, and start brewing some water breathing potions. Okay, these are awkward potions now. Now to just add the puffer fish. And then I'm also going to store all of these inside of a shulker box because it's about to get really chaotic with a ton of potions. Okay, and there we go. Let's craft a slowness potion. And to do that, I'm going to need some sugar. Let's see. So I think it goes sugar, and then you add a fermented spider eye to it. Oh, wait, but I don't have any fermented spider eyes. Wait a second. I think I need more sugar. So I'm gonna have to go down here where it's all dark and wait for a witch to spawn. And to make things go faster, I'm gonna get rid of all these torches. That way there's more areas for mobs to spawn. Oh my gosh, four creepers spawn at once? What the heck? I have never seen anything like that before. Oh, whoa. If only it could have been four witches at once. I just heard a witch. Wait, here it is. Hello. Did it drop any sugar? Okay, no sugar. That was pretty quick to find my first witch though. So I hope that my good luck streak continues. Oh my gosh, look at this. I found a chicken. I can't believe it. Let's get rid of the zombie. Trying very hard not to kill the chicken. There we go. Let's see if I can get some seeds now. There we go. I got some seeds. All right, let's try to use this to bring this chicken home now. I don't know how I'm going to get him all the way up there. Whoa, whoa, my gosh. Okay. I'm glad I didn't die right there. <laughs> Come on, chicken, please. Oh my gosh. The chicken is just getting dragged down by the water. Oh no. This could not have gone any worse, I think. And I can't go up to grab a lead because otherwise he'll despawn. Oh my gosh. Come on, chicken, please. Let's get out of here. Okay, it's working. And I made it home. Oh my gosh. Now I'm quickly gonna run down here and grab some seeds. And then I can breed my two chickens together. Okay, here we go. And there we go. We have some chickens now. I can't believe it. That took so long to get chickens in this world. But let's grab some fences real quick. Make a little enclosure for my chickens. And get them all to come in here. Come on, friends. And there we go. Nice. I have a little chicken farm now. That is so amazing. But I'm still searching for some more witches. And my luck has not been very good. I've only found one witch. And it didn't even drop me sugar. So the Hunt for a witch continues. Oh my gosh, two witches at once? What are the odds? Let's see, please drop sugar. Oh, I think that one did. Okay, whoa, I have five sugar now? What the heck? Okay, that was really weird. I don't know how two just spawned like that, but I guess it made up for all of my bad luck leading up to this. Let's head down here now. Let's see, I need some brown mushrooms. Do I have any? Okay, I have one and I think that's all we need. Let's craft a fermented spider eye, craft up a potion of speed first, and then we'll put the fermented spider eye on to turn it into slowness. Actually, wait, hold on. I think you can also craft a potion of slowness by 
using a rabbit's foot. And I actually have tons of these from my cat. So let's grab one, put it into here, and then we'll use this instead of my sugar because sugar is actually pretty rare down here. All right, it should be jump boost. And now if I add this, it should turn into slowness. All right, let's see. And there we go, potion of slowness. Nice, let's add it to my shulker box. And now up next, I'm gonna craft potions of night vision and invisibility. And both of those require golden carrots. So let's head over to my villagers, grab some emeralds, go to my farmer villager, and buy some golden carrots. These villagers have been so useful during these 100 days. I'm really glad I built this village, even though it is kind of cursed. I mean, look at these guys. <laughs> All right, let's grab some water bottles, craft up an awkward potion, and then a golden carrot to make night vision. And wait a second, I need another fermented spider eye. Oh my gosh. And I'm all out of brown mushrooms. So I have to head back to the nether real quick and see if I can find any brown mushrooms. They're actually pretty common, so I don't think this should be very difficult. I see tons of regular mushrooms, but so far no brown mushrooms. Oh, there we go. Look, a whole patch of them. That's amazing. Oh, there's so many. In total, I got 12. That is more than enough. Now that I have that, we can grab a spider eye and turn it into a fermented spider eye. All right, let's add this now. And that should give me a potion of invisibility. I don't think I've ever actually crafted invisibility before, so I really hope this works. Okay, there we go. Nice. Let's add all these to my shulker box. And now we're going to do the same thing, but without the fermented spider eye to craft night vision. Okay, there we go. I have some night vision. Let's add these to my shulker box. And now up next, let's craft some poison potions. First, we have to make some awkward potions and then a spider eye to craft poison. Okay, and there we go. All right, now what's next? I have strength, fire resistance, regeneration, water breathing, slowness, poison, night vision, invisibility, weakness. So I think the only two potions left are jump boost and slow falling. And this is exactly why I needed phantom membranes from my cat earlier, since without them, you can't craft slow falling potions. And I also have tons of rabbit's foot to craft potions of leaping. So let's grab some more water, craft up some awkward potions, turn them into slow falling, and then some jump boost potions. All right, and that should be everything. And now to make things go a little bit easier, I'm going to turn one of each of these potions into a splash potion. So let's put them all in here, grab some gunpowder, and turn them into splash potions. Okay, so I'm organizing all my potions, and I realize that I'm missing just one. And that's a potion of speed, which lucky for me, I have extra sugar, so it should be super easy. Okay, there we go. We have potions of speed. Whoa, these are really pretty. Look at that. But now let's turn them into splash potions, and then we'll have every single potion that I need. Oh, wait a second. I also need resistance, and to craft it, I need a turtle shell. And there's no turtles down here at all, so I don't think I can get resistance. Oh, but I do have a beacon, and I think if I put resistance on it, then it should work. So let's try it out. First, we need to organize all these potions, though, to make sure I have all of them. Okay, this should be everything that I need minus resistance. So let's grab this up, grab some iron to power my beacon, and now we just have to head over to my beacon, put resistance on it, and I think we should be good to go. I'm so scared. I really hope this works. Works. Let's move everything out of my hotbar, put all these potions in there, and let's just do it. Here goes nothing. Okay. Seems to be working so far. And now this last one, and I should get the advancement. Let's see. Okay, we did it! <laughs> A furious cocktail. Have every potion effect applied at the same time. And look at this. Oh my gosh. That is so chaotic. Look at how many effects there are. And this is actually my first time ever getting this advancement in hardcore. And we did it in a cave only world too. That is quite the accomplishment. But there we go. I think that's all the advancements that I could possibly do down here. But that was perfect timing since we just have one day left to go. And I think I know what I want to do. I have these two chickens over here and I'm going to breed them one more time. So now I have three chickens. And now I think I want to name these chickens after the chickens in my hardcore world. This one's already named E, so let's grab two extra name tags, an anvil, and we're gonna name one A, and the other one we're gonna name Sports. I know, these names are not very clever, but it's all that I can come up with. All right, let's name this one A, and then the baby will name him Sports. And there we go, we have EA Sports. <laughs> I don't know why I find this so funny, but it looks like all the villagers have just gone to sleep. So that means it's time for me to sleep one more time and make it day 200. Oh, look at the cat, it's so cute. And there we go, day 200. This was such a fun challenge, and honestly, I never thought I'd be able to make it this far in a cave only world. We accomplished so much in just 200 days, but that's going to be all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.